Okay. All right, guys, I, I don't mean to cut you off and I don't mean to just jump right into it, but there's a lot, <laughs> like there's yep. a lot to cover here. Um, and uh, I know Carrie just joined, which is good. I think Peter David is gonna join us a little bit later on. Fran again apologizes that he couldn't make it. Uh, in the post-COVID era, sure, a lot of people are getting COVID again, <laughs> but it is what it is. I think we're all kind of used to having to reschedule in this uh, day and time. So I apologize uh, that I wasn't, uh, I was ready yesterday, uh, but unfortunately I wanted to make sure that uh, I really had the science down. I just didn't feel comfortable. And as a matter of fact, they're still waiting on the scientific advisory uh, with Fran and Adrian and Michelle, Carrie, uh, and with Sarah and Kevin, who are on the Wolf Management. They are still working on it. And just know you'll you'll sort of be able to tell on here it's 173 pages and, and a lot of it is really technical so i'm going to give you the overview of what i know and kind of putting it into into essentially layman's terms not insulting your education but some of this occupancy model it's hard to get a grip around i think even for the scientists right now so i'm just letting you know that's what's going on but we're going to jump right into this because i don't want i don't want i mean a wild friday night this is i wouldn't be doing anything anyway but uh you know i want to make sure that you know this so the wolf management plan training um obviously by our our groups friends of wisconsin wolf great lakes wildlife alliance um i do want to just kind of go through this with you you do have till january 10th 2023 so don't think, oh my God, we're late. We're, we're doing just fine. And we all have Christmas break. It's probably a great time to do that. And we'll be reminding you for sure. So I am actually gonna just turn off my uh, video here so that we can focus on the presentation. If anything goes wrong, just unmute and let me know, okay? Cause I'm on my dang laptop again and uh, it can be troubling. So we'll just kind of jump right into it. So the Wisconsin will not, well, was, geez, not now. Wisconsin DNR Wolf Plan, it sets kind of three key objectives. So the first is to ensure a healthy and sustainable wolf population to fulfill its ecological role, wolves, uh, address and reduce wolf related conflict, and to provide multiple benefits associated with the wolf population. Um, the most significant thing and the biggest win that we've had is that this draft makes no reference to this numerical population target. So this whole battle that we've been going on, not just since I've been involved, but with 10 years prior to, uh, is this 350 number. So I wanna talk about that briefly. So when, when the first creators were making the very first wolf management plan, it was never a scientific number, right? It was a kind of a political number, uh, a number that thought maybe we can get to 350 wolves because it was so long ago that scientists didn't know. Well, 20 years goes by and the science is better. However, our enemies essentially hung on to that number for whatever reason. And that's really been a battle for us uh, over many years, probably more than 15 years, that um, this 350 number, that's all they've been doing, you know, getting county resolutions to support 350 wolves or less, trying to influence the legislature. Well, that's gone. It's gone. It doesn't exist in the wolf management plan. There's no reference to it in the wolf management plan. So uh, I want to congratulate. I don't. I, Kevin is on here and Carrie and, and our scientific advisory board. I really think that this is something our organization did. I really do, uh, because we were the we were the ones who advocated. Oh, if you could mute, please. Um, we were the ones who advocated. Can you just go ahead and mute you then? I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, it just makes my dogs bark when that happens. Um, uh, that this was a big win for us. So I don't want, we're going to go into some negativity in this plan, but I, I do want to, I do want to say and kind of congratulate the agency that they are moving forward to a, to a, 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 a wolf or a wildlife manager plan more similar to bear and other wildlife that there is no cap. <laughs> I mean, imagine if we said, okay, there can only be a hundred thousand deer, they would flip. So that's a good thing going into that. Uh, that was, I think our, the biggest shock that I saw. So I'm going to move on with the slides. I'm trying to admit people at the same time. Here we go. Uh, if it works, come on. Hello. Oh no, don't be frozen. Hang on, just a second, one second, guys. Go. There we go. Oh, and I hit it too many times. Sorry, guys. It's kind of what I was afraid of. All right. So another thing that I do want to talk about before we go into the details of this plan, and I think this is an excellent quote from Dr. Adrian Trevis. <laughs> A dog uh, who's on our scientific advisory board. So, I mean, you can read it yourself. When the DNR stacked, sorry, I can't read it myself because someone's another person's in. I should 
Sorry, guys, I hate technical things. Uh, when the DNR stacked the advisory with pro hunting, pro wolf hunting groups, they continued an anti democratic and failed policy of the Walker administration by dismissing the values of the true majority of the public that do not support killing wolves, even in cases of livestock loss. And the uh, quotation and completely ignored the will of youths and future generations of Wisconsin residents. Therefore, any claim about a majority view or a balanced committee in this report is inaccurate on its face. And I tend to agree with that. So think about that when we're going through this, that we know we're going into a biased wolf management plan. Are there improvements? Certainly. But uh, comparatively to Minnesota and Michigan, we, we have a ways to go to be represented uh, in this. And you're going to see kind of how their data contradicts uh, the makeup of their wolf committee. So, uh, you know, hopefully we'll be invited back to be on that committee and we can make continue to make strides uh, that that echo our values and those of the public. So I just kind of want to let you know that what that's one of our, our bigger complaints is that while it's improved, it's not, it's not perfect. Okay. So in the wolf management plan, there are, there are four sections of this plan. Am I going too fast? No? I don't think so. Okay. Uh, there's it, these issues to tackle. So they divided this plan into four parts. The first is wolf conservation and overview, including biology, ecology, and population dynamics. Uh, the next is human dimensions of wolf management, uh, that historical context and summary of the current state management of wolves. And lastly, the wolf management plan goal statement with an associated suite of objective strategies and products to guide wolf management in the years ahead. And that is taken directly from them. So we're going to kind Excuse of- Excuse me, through. Melissa. Oh yeah, go are ahead. Are you able to hear me? Um, yeah, I am. Is this recorded? Yes. Are, recording. are you recording this? Yep. Because it is a little fast for me, but that's- Oh, okay. I'll try to slow down. Maybe I'll take no, pause. I don't, I don't want you to slow down or you won't cover everything, but- Oh, okay. And this, um, not I, only that, but this, uh, this, uh, gosh, I can't speak up. Uh, PowerPoint presentation will be available for you too. And it actually will go out in our newsletter so you'll have it directly. Actually, you'll have it tonight. Uh, oh, okay. okay. Yeah, I'll try to- Because I've had vision, I, eye surgery recently. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Like, yes, yeah, it will. And again, you don't, you don't have to know it all today. You've got time. You've got like, essentially uh, a little over a month. So, mm -hmm. all right. Okay, yeah, Thanks, as Judy. long as I have access to it again. Yep, Thank you. you. Uh-huh. All right. So this is their kind of overall wolf, Wisconsin wolf management plan. So implementing the strategies and products to achieve the objectives, monitor the actions and outcomes and evaluate the effectiveness, uh, learn, so report and review the findings and adjust management actions as needed to enhance effectiveness. So this is kind of their little you know, wheelhouse. If I ever hear that word again, I swear. <laughs> but their little kind of overall wheelhouse. So I'm just... This is just off the plan. You don't have, and we're going to go through all this. So here, I just got to figure out how to move this bar. Sorry, one second. It's in my way. Ugh, come on, down, down. I don't know how to get rid of it. <laughs> well, we'll just move it as it needs. So here's the good parts of the plan that, and, and I do think it's important that we acknowledge uh, the progress that was made and not continually be like, this is all garbage. Because I think if we throw out everything, it makes us look like we haven't read it. So again, we're gonna talk about that 350 number. So the previous plan referred to a 350 wolf recovery goal set when the population was much lower. The number proved contentious over the years, even though the original plan author said it was never meant as a cap. The 2022 draft plan does away with that debate entirely. It's also, I think, reflective of a new direction for wolf management in the state. So I think we can commend them that even when we were on the Wolf Management Plan Committee, they were still more than half the table was still fighting for 350. And they did take a minority viewpoint, I believe, on this because it's just not scientifically accurate. All right. The other good part of the plan, I'm trying to slow down here, guys. Uh, social science shows Wisconsin loves wolves overwhelmingly in every question. So uh, overall, most Wisconsinites somewhat or strongly agreed that predators like wolves keep nature in balance. And by 77%, that's that's big. That's big. So uh, next, that wolves are culturally important and that wolves are special animals that deserve our admiration. I mean, look at that. That's up in the 70 percentile. That is uh, substantial. Uh, similarity, a majority of Wisconsinites agreed that people and wolves should be able to coexist. And it's important to maintain a wolf population in Wisconsin. So I think we can pretty much say we agree with all those things too. And uh, I, I found this 
very encouraging. And even in 2014, they did a similar social survey uh, that was still in our favor. And they only sent that to hunters. They did not do this this time, actually. Uh, and I was wrong. They didn't do it this time. They sent it, uh, they bought uh, bought people from a, a company that uh, this is exactly what they do. So I think that's, we can see an increase in numbers. And I think we can also see an increase that in you know the past eight years, we've done a good job. You've done a good job showing and, and educating the public uh, that wolves aren't the big bad wolf from fairy tales. Okay, I'm gonna move my bar again. I don't know how to get rid of that. Okay, and then the other, uh, I think really good part of the plan is they took an extraordinary amount of time to demonstrate with scientific literature uh, the ecological benefits of wolves, what they, which they really had, I mean, they've done it, but not to this extent. So, I mean, they've covered how they implement CWD. And remember we had a speaker come on about the landscape of fear that it isn't necessarily that wolves are killing a lot of deer and elk, it's that they're making deer and elk act like deer and elk should when a predator is on the landscape. And you can go to this wolf management plan. I'm gonna show you that, but you can read a lot on here. I was, I think I was pleasantly surprised. There is some science missing, of course, uh, like, like always uh, there can be, but uh, overall, I think they really did a, a pretty, pretty bang up job on that. So that's good. And I think we've all, we've all pushed and advocated for that, for this kind of science. All right. Uh, here's the other uh, really good part of this plan is an increased acknowledgement of tribal values and goals. Is it perfect? No, but uh, after our wolf management committee was over, uh, Wisconsin, I can just read it to you, Wisconsin tribal perspectives and cultural significance as part of the development of this plan. The department formally requested that the federally recognized tribes in Wisconsin contribute a written narrative on the cultural significance of wolves to be included in the plan, acknowledging that it's not possible to speak with one voice for all tribes in Wisconsin, which they had pre previously done. They only gave one seat, and it usually was to Great Lakes Indian Wildlife Commission uh, for Anishinaabe values, and, and they added more. So the invitation was extended to all. The request was sent to the Tribal National Resource and Conservation Directors, historic preservation officers of all 11 federally recognized tribes and sent to Great Lakes Indian Fish and Wildlife Commission. Every tribe responded. So not it's not just uh, the, we like the Brother Wolf, we like the Anishinaabe story, but I think it's really important that the Ho-Chunk Nation and the Menominee tribe and, and all of the other tribes in Wisconsin had a chance to express their voice. Uh, it is a united voice in that they want wolves protected, but the reasons for that vary. And I think this is an important thing to reiterate to our advocates again, that uh, all tribes are different nations with different cultures. Um, and I, I was pleasantly surprised to see that. Uh, they've never done that before. So on the, on the Wolf Management Plan Committee, they had a seat for every tribe. They hadn't done that. So, you know, we are, I, I am seeing some, some improvements. So I don't, I just want, and I think it's important, I'll stop here a little bit uh, to take any questions, but I think it's important that we do acknowledge the progress the agency has made because I think it will make our criticism uh, stronger. I'm going to just pause there for just a second just to take a sip of water. Is this going too fast for anyone? Any questions? All right, great. I, I, I just want to say, this is Carrie from uh... Hi, Carrie. Um, hi. Happy December. Yes. I just want to say kudos to us. Like yes. we, we did this, you guys, yep. we, we did this. This is a direct consequence of the lawsuit that we won against the DNR and the proposed, um, you know, hunt, if you call it hunt, you know, the proposed kill that they were going to have. This is a direct consequence of what Judge Frost said in his ruling. There is no management plan. You don't have an emergency for seven years. DNR, you cannot write a plan. So excellent job, everybody. This is yes. from us. Yes. And that's not just the lawsuit. We needed all of your testimony to be able to win. So I, I don't think it's necessarily, I mean, Carrie was, you know, we all do our part and so do you. And I don't, you know, I, I agreed. So I think we, not just us made these changes, but a little bit kind of we did. <laughs> so I, so think, I think we, should, we can, it's hard for me to take credit, but we did a good job here. We did. We, 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 we did a good job. We did a good job. So, all right, here we go. Kind of more into the negative. All right. Melissa. Yes. Oh, yeah, Hi. go ahead. I just, 
You mentioned, um, sorry to interrupt, that there were multiple reasons for the different tribes. Um, yes. So is there a place that we could find that information? I don't yeah, want to yeah, take I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you right where it is. Cause I'm going to briefly oh. show you where it is in the wolf management plan. It's just 173 pages and I don't want to have to, you to have to dig through. <laughs> so Thank you. I will get to that. Okay, I'm just kind of doing the overview now. Okay. So the bad part of the plan, I think we, we kind of can already kind of know there's obviously there's hunting in it, but um, I thought Fran had a really good quote here. He's not able to join us tonight. Um, he, he would plan on it, but uh, he's unable to because he's actually he has to guest lecture for a professor who is out sick. So uh, I, I sent this quote to me. So there's plenty of scientific evidence documenting the harms that may come from wolf hunting. Wolves self-regulate their populations without any need for human intervention. Given the internal regulation on overpopulation of wolves is scientifically unheard of and clearly a value judgment by humans who would rather have fewer wolves on the landscape. Wolves, sorry, I gotta move this stupid. Wolves know what they need to live sustainably and it's a fallacy that their numbers need to be maintained. Nor is there any evidence that wolf hunting decreases wolf-human conflicts. On the contrary, wolf hunting will likely create problems that did not exist in the first place. Wolf killing disrupts the social stability that allows for their cooperation and self-regulation. Hunting causes the breakup of wolf family groups necessary for taking down large prey, which in turn leads to some wolves shifting from wild to easier domestic prey. Hence, wolf hunting should increase harms to wolves, domestic animals, and their guardians. And I think that you guys know this. I think we've talked about this, but in this wolf, in the plan, uh, they do want to use recreational hunting as a conflict resolution tool. It doesn't work. Wolf recreational wolf hunting, generalized hunting does nothing to address depredation on livestock. It just doesn't. It's just a fact. I'm tired of arguing it as fact. They know it's fact. So I think this is a uh, pretty significant and I think probably the most significant thing we're going to be commenting on. Okay, sorry, I've got to move this silly thing. Okay. And Melissa, then this is Nancy. I'm yes. going to interrupt you because yeah, sure. that is exactly what Michigan is using. And the reason they do that is because the average person um, out there, no matter what state you're in, if you go up to them and say, do you think wolves should be killed? Um, or should there be a hunting season because there's conflict? There is a lot of public support for that because the people do not know the science behind it. So saying they need a hunt for conflict resolution is really a charade for a recreational hunt. And I think that's a really important point to make because like you said, uh, the average person doesn't know the science and they say they'll trust the DNR, if DNR says there's a conflict on a farm yep. and hunting's going to resolve it, I support that. Yep. And I'm going to actually get to that point too, Nancy, but yes, thank you. So the next bad part of the plan is, and this is gets where it's a little technical and why I kind of wanted to wait a little bit uh, for the scientists, but they're going to come up. Carrie's here. So we got Carrie. That's all I'm going to No, I'm not going to make it fall on you, Carrie. I think Peter was going to try to join by 6.30. So if he does, we'll come back to this. Uh, he's been helping me a lot um, and gave me a really good antidote. So I, I'm gonna cover this briefly um, and then we may come back to it. So occupancy modeling. So let me just go to the next slide and move this stupid Zoom bar, sorry. Like how do I make that disappear? Oh, well. So here's how the population was counted prior to the February hunt. Uh, wolves were counted midwinter and the minimum population count was used to estimate the total wolf population. Uh, there were hundreds of miles by both DNR staff and volunteers, along with telemetry collars. While not perfect, the system was much more accurate with limited confidence intervals and much more conservative. And I'm going to explain what that is. The new occupancy model, okay, the new model relies heavily on estimated territory size and how likely wolves are to inhabit a certain area. This estimate is of the entire population with much higher confidence intervals. The agency believes this estimates the entire population. Built in the framework of full, per oops, I made a little spelling error, sorry guys, uh, with the full protection and a lot of uncertainty without being conservative. And it's not good for sending hunting quotas. Sure, right now wolves are protected, but we know how this goes back and forth. 
So I'm going to just pull up my notes here because it is kind of hard to understand. I don't expect anyone to be an uh, expert on, on modeling, Adam's model, new occupancy model. It is hard, but I can tell you kind of, because uh, I had somebody had to explain it to me, is that these, these, the new model uh, goes, it doesn't go by range and it doesn't go by pack size and the territories are kind of poorly defined. Um, it also doesn't uh, account for a lot of mortality of wolves. So let's say that February 2021 20, hunt, right? We know that uh, the Hounsers got together and uh, eliminated a pack, right? Like they took out the whole pack. They organized, they knew it was coming. They used dogs and snowmobiles and they took out the whole pack. So in this new occupancy, oh, I'm sorry, new occupancy model, Vincent, sorry. <laughs> Sorry, you guys. Give me one second here. Sorry. Shush! He doesn't like the occupancy model either. <laughs> but uh, hopefully he's going to stop working here. It's probably my mailman that he's seen a thousand times. Sorry. I'm just... Hey! Oh, man, for crying out loud. Sorry, guys. All right, back to where I was. So, uh, poorly defined territory. Uh, it doesn't go over the secondary impacts on wolves. And I think this is where it, it will make sense to you. So, when they did the previous population count, right, they would say we counted wolves, like we physically counted them. And this is what we think. This doesn't physically count wolves, although I will say the DNR is still using on the ground, but not to the extent, and they're gonna try to phase that out. So remember when they came out with the count, they said there's 972 wolves in the state, and that the hunt didn't affect the wolf population. That's using this new occupancy model. What they really are saying is, we are about 95% sure the population of wolves is 740 to 1200. They're not really saying 972, they just took the middle number. So it could be as low as 714, which means then the hunt did have significant, significant uh, effect on the population. So that's what they mean about uh, confidence intervals. So the, the Adams model, the previous model, it wasn't perfect, but it had littler, uh, littler smaller confidence. Uh, and this has larger. So basically the uncertainty uh, in this occupancy model. So they're saying, okay, well, based on our model, we're 95% sure the wolf population is 741 to 1200. That's what they're really saying when they told the public there's 972 wolves with this model, okay? So maybe let's say there really is 972. The problem is this, it, it's very uncertain, right? Like if you're setting a wolf hunt quota for the future, and what you're really saying to us is you're 95% sure it's 741 to 1200. You set a quota for 300 at 741, that's gonna lower the wolf population to unsustainable levels. If it's at 1200 and you set it for the same number, it might be okay. And so based on the fact that this is still an endangered species, legally, probably biologically, certainly within the realms of the Endangered Species Act, we don't feel this new model is conservative enough for in the future to uh, figure out uh, how many wolves should be killed in the state. So, uh, and Peter David just texted me. I think he is going to join, but he gave me a really great uh, uh, antidote. Or an antidote, it's not antidote. I can't speak tonight. What is wrong with me? But let's say you had your banker told you they were ninety five percent sure you had seven hundred dollars or twelve hundred dollars in the bank, and you had an eight hundred and fifty dollar bill coming in, and the and the fee of if you bounced your check would be two hundred and fifty dollars. Would you want to be a little bit more sure before you drafted out $850, whether it was $741 you had or $1,200 you had? Does that make sense to everybody? I'll stop there and, and see if there's questions because I know that this is a little a little hard. Well, it's more complicated than that. You're giving it more credit than you should. Than well, just... sure, sure. I'm, I'm trying to kind of I'm dumb it down, certainly. Not dumb it down, but make it a little more palatable. The sure, whole thing ahead, is Max. nonsense because it depends on your assumptions about how large an area, all kinds of right. stuff. You could vary those numbers up to 10,000 and down to zero if you put different, well, different assumptions into the model. It's all 100% yeah. trash. trash. It is. So, yes, and the only reason that I'm not saying that tonight 
is that I'm waiting kind of for the scientists to come out and say it's trash. So I, I don't feel that bad. I think I am giving the uh, occupancy model more, more credit. I am also pulling it from the wolf management plan and their words. So just know that that's their words. I think it is also fair that they've moved to this new model because it's more cost effective. I think that's fair. Uh, it's less man hours on the ground. But yes, uh, this is very similar. I mean, and, and yeah, it is not a good, it's not a good plan, but this is also how we measure bear. It's how we measure deer. It's how we measure almost everything. So we've used this model on all of the wildlife. And so I think there is a part where they're trying to match that together. I've got 8 trillion notes on this. <laughs> um, but the other thing too, guys, is to remember when they switched to this, and even in Idaho, wolves were under full protection under this model. So I think that that matters. And I think that's pretty significant um, because it allows them to liberalize management of wolves um, and, and relatively shocking. If, if there's any sort of, let's say a distemper outbreak goes through, it's based on where they think wolves can live, not how many wolves there are. So if there is an emergency in our population, high poaching, a disease that goes through, they're still gonna come up with it, with this, you know, 972 wolves based on where they think wolves live. And based on the fact that we know hunters and poachers take out entire packs. So really it's, uh, it's, it's and we only have 12 wolves collared in Wisconsin, by the way. So. Uh, and, th and they're planning on reducing that too. Reducing, I know it's collars are controversial, but they do provide data for population. So, um, you know, the, basically the mortality in the model uh, is underestimated. You know, when they said it's a 14% decline in population from February, bull bullshit, guys. Sorry to use that word, but it's it's just not true. Um, you made. You know, can, oh, go ahead. You made an interesting point that you can manipulate the model uh, to protect wolves. Yep different assumptions in it or you can manipulate the model to kill all the wolves in the state by putting different assumptions in that's right and, and they don't have those assumptions down as this is what we're going to do so that well, i mean it depends it depends on who is right in the model and what that's right putting in right so you need to get new people in the dnr well okay we'll do that tomorrow okay thank you <laughs> yes. yeah but basically I mean, the modeling that doesn't uh -huh. take in a lot of data I, I agree with Max and I agree with Melissa in terms of the, you know, the data and the manipulations and the inputs and sure. the outputs of the model. I think what we need to do um, as an organization and to get information that um, our advocates can use successfully, you know, is once, you know, just make it simple because it is super complicated, is. Um, but just make it simple in terms of, you know, maybe three or four sentences in a paragraph. We don't trust the model. If this is what you're basing your population information on, you know, um, have that on a parallel track with the population counts that were always used. I mean, on the ground tracking, because that was yes. reliable, you know, so we just need to make it simple for our advocates to, yes. you know, in a few sentences say, this is what we recommend. Yep. And, but I do want to, you know, more information is never going to hurt. And we can definitely do that. Like, look at the science, do that, make up, you know, certainly we can take Great Lakes wildlife alliance's statement on it you can just take our statement uh that we will be using but i did kind of want to go through this because this is significant when it comes to the science of this wolf management plan and i think this is the most Correct. significant when it comes to the science i mean they're not arguing with us on ecology they're not arguing with us they're arguing with us on two things modeling and using wolf hunting as a conflict resolution tool i think those are the two big alarming things there's more so I'm going to just keep going if that's okay, and we can revisit right. this. Okay. I just was going to make oh, a comment. Ahead, I think there is another issue with this occupancy model sure. since they use it for other wildlife. There's a big difference when you're dealing with a million deer and a thousand wolves. Um, you know, if they're 95% accurate that we have 750,000 or a million deer. Um, it's not going to be that significant. But when, like you say, with the range that they're doing, and the same thing for bears, we have, you know, what, 20,000, 25,000 bears in Wisconsin. Um, so it's not the same. They can't just use the same modeling for wolves that they use for uh, species where we have a million of them. Right. And interesting, they don't use the occupancy model on elk. 
So that's just a thing. But I'm going to move on because there's more other, more, listen to me, more other things. Sorry, guys. Additional things I want to talk about. We, these we can always revisit. So I'm trying to go through so we have lots of time for question and answer. And I'm doing pretty good on time. So I'm going to keep going. All right, here are the other concerns, kind of smaller details, but no less significant, especially to us. There is no policy on for baiting that they will ban baiting for wolves into the future. Now think about this, goes into the future. Uh, one thing that we keep getting after them is hound dog training, okay? Hound dog training when wolves are delisted is allowed 365 days a year, night or day by any method you want. The committee did not address this, even though we continually bring it up, that hound dog training, it doesn't even have any, I mean, it barely has limits on bears. For wolves, it has none. Uh, that is going to be a significant comment in our uh, Great Lakes Wildlife, and I think it should be for you. There's also a part in here that says, oh, I'm sorry, excuse me, really quick. Admit and I'm trying to admit people at the same time I'm presenting. Okay, uh, that there is a, a statement in here saying, well, they've never proved that chocolate or other poisons are really poisonous to wolves. Yes, they have. So they need to make, I think it's fair in the wolf management plan to say, in order to keep wolves alive, we need to remove chocolate bear bait. Even though it's for bears, they know wolves eat chocolate bear bait. I think this is a good time to maybe, we could get this in and change it for bears since the bear committees won't listen to us on this issue. Um, also, as we keep fighting, the hound damage compensation is still intact. Yes, it has to be passed by law, but that doesn't mean the plan can't say, we kind of think we need to phase out dog damage compensation. And it should. Um, and then finally, who will continue to implement this plan? We, uh, as far as we know, everyone who was on the Wolf Advisory Committee, our job is done, and they're going to redo it again. Who is going to implement this plan? They don't have anybody picked yet, and I think that's pretty significant because is it going to be the hunting community and the anti-wolf crowd that implement this? Are they going to invite all the tribes back? Are they going to invite you know just saying, well, it's going to be balanced? That's not good enough. So I think they need to announce who is going to be on the next Wolf Advisory Committee to, so we know who's going to implement the Wolf Plan. Not knowing who's going to implement it, well then why are we even commenting on it? And finally, and I think you know where this is going, wolf hunting and trapping season. So there was a social survey, and we're going to talk about that more in depth, but about uh, wolf hunting. Does Wisconsin want a wolf hunting and trapping season? So their results showed that support, 46% of the respondents said that regulated hunting of trapping and wolves is higher than the opposition. Did they include the fact that they use hound versus wolves in the survey? No, they didn't. So one quarter of Wisconsinites were undecided in the survey. So if we were able to change that one quarter, that's our job as advocates, advocates right? One quarter just said, well, I don't know. We get them to say no. Now, now we have full we have just as high as wolves are important in Wisconsin. So I just want to note that really quick. So obviously support was higher of people who live in wolf range uh, than it was for people outside. While modifications to question designs between 2014 and 22 limited statistical care comparisons. I'll just let you know what that is. They changed the wording to a lot of the questions because I complained. Uh, informal comparisons suggest that statewide support for a wolf hunting and trapping season has declined over the last eight years. So we know we're winning. People don't want wolves hunted. Um, and if they don't know, maybe they're not sure, uh, it doesn't matter. I mean, even in Wolf Range, that 57% uh, of people that in Wolf Range, which live with wolves, who want a wolf trapping and hunting season, do you know what that was before? It was 68%. That's dropped. That's huge. It's dropped 11. Uh, support has dropped 11% in Northern Wisconsin for wolf hunting. And I think we can thank ourselves again for that. And I'm, it's not, this isn't a Good job, Great Lakes Wildlife Alliance. But all of you, letters to the editor, getting out there, the media hearing you testify at these committee meetings. So don't take this as necessarily bad. Uh, it is an improvement from 2014 survey, and that's not in a lot of time. So the top reason for opposition was concern that wolves would become endangered again. So I think the majority of the public, or at least, gosh, almost half, know that the DNR has been mismanaging wolves for this entire time, because if they had confidence in the agency on wolf management, well, they wouldn't have to worry wolves would become endangered again, would they? So the least selected reason for opposing a uh, regulated wolf and hunting trapping season was, I don't know. So the people that are opposing this, they don't even really have an opinion on it. So I think while it looks bad, it, unless you really look at the data, this is, <laughs> this is really good data. So I think it is, again, a, a chance for us to, 
get those undecideds. We got to get branch out. And that's on me too. You know, I'm like, God, if these undecideds had just known the facts and the science, we would, we would be winning overwhelmingly. What would the DNR say if it was 79% of people did not favor wolf hunting season? They probably still do it, but at least we'd have those facts behind us. Okay. And I'm just letting you know our stance. Now, honestly, we oppose recreational wolf hunting and trapping in Wisconsin. This is where I don't want to commend the DNR, like, oh my God, they're so great. They have done some changes in how they would hunt wolves in the future. One of those changes is by issuing licenses by zone and not over the whole state. So there'd be no more of this. We met our quota, the Hounders, we met our quotas over here in Sawyer County. So now we're going to put all our dogs in the car and zoom over to Douglas County. They won't be able to do that anymore. They won't be able to report and do their little organization they did at the wolf hunt where they all waited to the very last minute. They have eight hours to report. I think that will be significant. And I, and I think the DNR did look at what they can do uh, within the confines of Act 168, okay? Because that dictates wolf hunting. There's not a lot of wiggle room when it comes to this, but I'm kind of proud of them that they took the time to see how can we reduce any overage of, of our wolf quota if, if we have another hunting season. The other thing they implemented were, bo were, were boundaries around the tribal reservations, which they've opposed this whole time. So I think that's a, another good sign, at least when you're reading the hunting part. I'm just gonna go over our stance and what we're going to say. Yes, of course, we're gonna say overall, we oppose recreational wolf hunting and trapping, but we oppose, uh, but more importantly, why do we care? Sure, I've got my story, I've got my emotional connections, all valid here. For our organization, I'm just letting you know what, our, my, what I say may be different and what you say as an individual, but I think what we, oh darn, another spelling error, sorry guys. We, <laughs> we oppose it to reduce conflict. And if the DNR is basing wolf hunting on reducing conflict, then we oppose wolf hunting and trapping in Wisconsin. So I think we can use their own quote unquote science against them here. Um, and then opposing recreational hunt wolves in prime habitat. Why is it the quotas in the places where wolves belong, deep within Shaquamagon National Forest, for example, why are those areas, why do they have the highest quotas? So I think we can get, and again, this is about making a little bit of a change, but I think we, we could say, let's ban the, the prime habitats based on your occupancy model. You know what those prime habitats are. Let's ban wolf hunting in those areas of prime habitat. Sorry, I'm just going to take a little sip. Secondly, we oppose hunting and trapping and hounding of all canids artif to artificially increase ungulate populations, hunter satisfaction, or to generate funds for wolf management. That's ridiculous. They do not use all the deer licenses to deal with deer conflict. I don't think that, uh, then that just gives the wolf hunters a way to say, see, our wolf hunting licenses help pay for farmers. We, we can't have that. Now, granted, it's state law that that is, has to be the case. But that doesn't mean we can't have it in the wolf management plan. As you heard from the last DNR meeting, things change quickly. So I think it's important for us to make a statement that uh, hunter satisfaction of other species is not a valid reason to have a wolf hunting and trapping season because it's not based on science. Um, and the deer population's already inflated enough, so is the bear. But wolf fund management should come from overall funds and not from hunter funds because you already can see what's gonna happen there and is happening. <clears throat> Sorry. Lastly, you can see the big hound dog. I was so happy to find that little graphic. Uh, we oppose all hound hunting, but especially of hound versus wolf. We oppose all hound training season, especially of hound versus wolf. And we oppose all reimbursement for dead or injured hounds. Darn it, I don't know why this reverted. Sorry, I'll fix these spelling errors too out here. But okay, I'm gonna just keep going. Here are some other resources too. So. Um, this is just kind of a, an overview. Obviously, there's a lot more that can be said, and we'll get into that. On our advocacy tools page, we will have a wolf management plan, including this presentation, other the scientific statement, and our testimony. I am going to get that together next week so you can read what, what our organization had to say. The other thing I want to show you really quickly is this National Wolf Recovery Plan. It's going to click on it. Come on. There we go. So I hope it's you can still see the screen share here. Kitty cat, no. It's going to work. Anyway, this is a plan that was developed uh, kind of across the entire country. Nancy, you worked on this, didn't you not? I think so. But right here is a guide for working on. Yes, I did. Uh, okay. I'm sorry. Science I just muted. Oh, sure. No worries. Science, inclusivity, and ethical practices. So 
I'm not going to click on it, but there's two resource guides. It's 166 pages in length. It's very long, but you will find academic and scientific research to back up every single recommendation I've made tonight and in this Wolf document. And it's a living document. They keep it, they keep it updated. Um, so like I said, there's an advocate. There's one called View the Agency Guide. Okay. We're going to click on that. I know I'm going over this quickly, but I promise this will be recorded if you want to look at it later. So this is what they we recommend recommend to the agency. Oh God, I don't want to give a gift right now. Sorry, guys. Um, what they recommend for the agency, and you can kind of go through this too, about ethical standards and the wolf planning resource. So um, you can kind of look on here. I think that it's a really good uh, agency edition, you have to kind of, but you can see it's 20 pages long. I'm not going to go through all of it here, but, or the forward or here. Um, you know, what is the goal? You can kind of look on here. Where, what are, you know, what goals are important for a state? Um, but I think this is a good, interesting thing to go over. It's really not that much reading, but there's an advocate one. Um, and then here's this, you know, about uh, being equitable, inclusive, like our first point about livestock, commitment to non-lethal wolf management. So you can kind of look at these things. And how do I just get that? Sorry, guys. <laughs> um, you can kind of get back. All right. You can look through here. And we'll have this on our website. Hopefully this, there we go. Good idea. Um, and then scientific papers. Like I, we try to keep you updated with the closest science, bring scientists on board. Fran is working and, and Adrian and um, Michelle, they're all working very hard to go over this uh, so we can say, hey, this occupancy model, like, like Max said, this is hot garbage. So um, this is why. And you know, I think it's fair to say this is hot garbage, but I think we need to back that up. So the review of our scientific advisory board will come out next week and I will send that off. I even considered, and it's kind of up to you guys, we can do another chat next week if the scientists are available to specific, gosh, <laughs> specifically go over uh, more of the, the science here. But I, I think the science is pretty clear on, on the, our, two main, uh, our two main components. All right, and this is the last page where I'm gonna kind of show you what some of you asked the questions. Sorry, I've gotta move this darn, oh. I hate this laptop. Okay, what can you do to be more, not eco-conscious, geez, Thomas. take the survey. So I'm gonna show you what that looks like, um, but I'm gonna go through these. How can you influence others? Share this presentation with friends or family. I swear I'll, I thought the spell check went through. Stay informed by attending our firesides and prepare to things for things to change quickly. And I can't reinforce that enough. They will change things quickly. You know, I mean, what would we be looking at if Evers hadn't won? Uh, and the, you know, the other thing too is, <laughs> We're gonna comment on this wolf plan and maybe they'll take our suggestions and, and by law, like we learned from the agency meeting, the natural resource board has to approve it. That's gonna be difficult. So uh, it's just something we can, you know, we look forward to 2023 with this natural resource board. And then, you know, I'm posing this to you. There aren't any right answers. It's kind of for a discussion if we didn't have it, but what can be done to influence this wolf management plan in your community? Um, and then, just me, there's my little raccoons. Uh, you know, you can contact me and you get, there's our website. So I'm gonna go back a little bit here and I'll turn this on. Oops. Okay, we're gonna go look at the survey really quickly and then we'll come back and have a discussion. I'm hoping I can get this part done in the next minute or so. So it'll be fast, but don't worry uh, because you're gonna be surprised about the comments. You don't have to comment uh, through the website, I actually kind of suggest that you do. Um, again, a deadline is January 10th. So can you guys see the DNR site? I just want to make sure. Yes. Yes. Okay, here you can invest time in reading the draft plan. Okay, you can go on there and you can look and I'll show you where those native uh, statements are. But I want to show you this first. So you click on the online comment tool. This is page one, okay? Darn this thing. There we go. This is page one. So we're going to do it, but I'm just not going to hit submit at the end. Hey, Melissa, no. just a quick yes. question. Um, can um, just Wisconsin residents do this or everyone should do this? The whole United States. Whole United States. Canada, okay. anywhere. I don't care. 
Um, there's no thing that they'll answer, they'll ask you. So here, M. Smith, there's my name. How much did I read? I read all of it. I'm a Wisconsin resident. Yep, I am. That's the easy part, right? You guys got that. Then you hit next. This is it, guys. This is it. That's it. So you have space to write in here. Here's the problem I have with this, is that you can't send supporting articles of science with this. Um, so I haven't decided what to do about that quite yet. But overall, what part do you like? And that's why I kind of divided that. Like, what did they do good? And I think you can just write down, hey, good job. You did, you did well on this. Here's what I didn't like. And you can write, here's what I don't like. Do, do you, you know, know how many characters they limit you to? I didn't, I didn't see any limit of characters. Or do they warn you that, hey, you're I, at this and... I don't think so. Okay. Yeah, because when I did it for practice this afternoon, I put a thousand words in and it left. So I don't think so. Um, overall, what elements from the draft plan don't you like? Put it right there. On a scale of one to 10, how would you rate the overall support for the plan as written? I think we're at five, but that's up to you. Um, I think... <laughs> It, I mean, if I was going to say compared to the old plan, what is my support? Well, that's eight, but it's not compared to it. It's this plan. So I have to look at this plan. I think five, six is fair. Um, you know, that's going to be up to you. I'm not going to tell you what to do. And then any other comments that you have. So I think you can kind of put this generally, like, here's what I like. Here's what I don't like. And then, you know, hey, by the way, the science says, you know, I think that might be where you want to put that comment. Again, I'm going to share with you our organization and how we did it. Um, I can't hit next or else it submits. And I already had to call them once to say, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> but when you hit submit, there is a email address that if you have any other comments you'd like to make um, that you, you can do so. I would not do that because it's not an answerable email. Um, so if you go back to, sorry. And I know I'm going through this fast. I'm going to have written instruction for you as well. Let's go back. Come on, BNR. Um, comments. I saw it some. Oh, I didn't see it here. So they don't have a way to for you to comment, submit comments via the online comment tool. I'm going to go back. Randy Johnson, just you can send it to him or ask him what he should do. I'm going to be asking that already. So unless you guys are doing this in the next three days, don't worry because I'm going to finish our, well, I got to wait for Fran and Adrian, but I'm going to finish our um, comments. And I'm not, I think I might send it via email and this form. Like I'm, I think I'll put my personal um, comments on the online tools and then send our organizations by email. Um, but I think I encourage you to use their online comment tool. The reason being is, and it'll sound weird. Oh, I can get out of this too. Sorry, guys. Um, there, there it is. Uh, the reason being is they can lose an email. When they do these forms, the forms don't go just to the wolf guys, right? It goes to the agency and it comes out as a document, okay? You can't scratch some of the comments. It, it's it, That's like the lady told me today. She's like, oh, it, <laughs> <laughs> your name and like I wrote sample in all those boxes just to go through it she has to report that as a comment she they cannot remove it she told me so that we learned from the lawsuit that they accidentally lose comments quite often so I really do encourage you to use the form and then if you use the form and you want to send additional information by email I think there's less of a chance your email is quote unquote lost if you're already on that form so at least we know via the form your comment is being counted because they print it out as one document. All right. Can you, can I am use the, can, can you use the form twice? Or you, you have use, more ideas later on? Can you use the form? I don't, I don't think so. I think they will scratch duplicates, but I don't know how they would know that. Oh, that's a good question. Let me write that down and I'll find that out for you. I think probably if you have additional ideas, an email is probably best. And I, I assume that's going to go to Randy Johnson. All right, I'm gonna stop. Do you guys want me to keep the screen up for anything, any reason? Well, there's a, a question in the chat about uh, out of state. Click the out of state resident. I'm lost. Can I answer that? Oh, let me see. You click out of state resident, correct. You, you're not a Wisconsin resident, but you should still comment 
wolves belong to everyone. The wolves in Montana are mine, just like the wolves in Wisconsin are yours. So yes. Uh, yes, please do another chat. Oh, Nancy said wolfplanning.org. Where would undecided people be? Cities or rural? I think both. I think, you know, if they sent a fair number, you'd be surprised how many people, we're so passionate, right? Just don't care. <laughs> they just right. don't care. Uh, for the same reason, if people sent me a, this is going to sound terrible. I shouldn't have, I'm going to think of a different example of something that's important to a lot of people I don't care about. Like if somebody's, you know, I don't know, like maybe something like a, a health, you know, I care about that. I care about everything. <laughs> Something I didn't really care about, but I knew enough to be like, well, I don't want to mess it up. I might write undecided on something. So I think that's really the viewpoint of the undecided. It's like, I don't know. I Maybe it's good to kill wolves. I don't really know. I don't know anything about wolves. That would be my guess. Oh, I like that. And I like these other ideas, po increasing poaching fines and sentencing. Okay, I'm just kind of going back up. Do you have any idea why they care whether you're out of state or in state? Do they pay more attention to the in-state ones or what? They do. They do. Which, you know, that it's controversial, but um, I, I think it's kind of silly. But I also kind of understand when they're dealing with wolf conflict, it's local wolf conflict, right? Someone in California is not dealing with wolf conflict in Wisconsin. I think that's fair. But, uh, you know, it's a, they're, they're federally ind recognized endangered species right now so i'm going to start my video again and kind of quit the share if that's right with you guys melissa i have a question about the natural resource board 